The loop of life and death was something that was mentioned in the trailer of Sumeru, and again in the Archon Quest as being a fundamental of Sumeru's story. If it was erosion that Zhongli and A were trying to prevent, Sumeru's story emphasizes the importance of the circle of life, and that eternity is cyclical, that all who die will simply resprout. The new artifact set, the Deepwood Memories, tells the legends of the old gods and deities in Sumeru, and the many mythical creatures that roam the deserts and the rainforests. This is the story of the forests, a story that actually began a very long time ago in the Verges at Venerere, but continued further here. I want to dissect its story and its importance to the history of not only Sumeru, but also the world. Though, as all artifact lore goes, not all of this has been contextualized yet. So the vagueness of the entry can definitely cause confusion on if a title refers to separate characters or if that title is also the same person with just different names. But nevertheless, we will do our best and welcome to the story of the forests. Let's begin with the Laurel Corone and the Labyrinth of the Viridescent. The deity that has dominion over the plants and the trees is known as the Greater Lord Rukhadevata, given how in another piece of lore, she is known as the God of the Woods. But there were many other mythical beings besides her that roamed the land. Either envoys or as equals is unsure. Legend has it that when the god of trees created a forest amidst the sands, the first order of the day was to create a device that could call forth the rains. This device would be known to us as the Varuna, but from the reflections that the moon and the water formed the tiger. This tiger's stripes were ever changing resembling the forest's branches, and thus did it become the ruler of the jungle. Its name became Viaghara. Viaghara ruled over the animals in the labyrinth, and while their rule continued, the seeds of pomegranates fell upon the soil and gave birth to the forest spirits. The lord of the forest blessed them under the Vasara tree, and made a pact with the divine. However, the forest would soon go through a terrible catastrophe for a time, where the light was shrouded and the water was corrupted and the final forest lord died in defense of the nurseries of life. But in their wake was a large whiskered cat that succeeded that regal name and guarded the woodland creatures in imitation of that lord. Though it could not bear to match the lord's might, it would keep the promise to protect the forest. This story is a simple legend of how the protectors of the forest would live and die in a cycle, and life simply goes on. This is furthered in the story of the Labyrinth Wayfarer, this one has a lot of monikers that suggest different people or creatures, so be ready to keep in mind all of the titles given we have no real names. When the Lord of the Forest was born, the King of Trees bestowed upon them a crown. We need to reestablish here that the Lord of the Forest is Vayaghara, the ruler of the jungle, while the King of the Trees is most likely the god of the trees that created them in the first place. The ancient legends say that the Lord of the Forest was immortal, and that all things will gain new life in some other form. Moving on, the crown of the Lord of the Forest would finally pass to the first maiden who had followed in the Lord's footsteps. This young maiden took in many children that were lost in the forest, and would serve to defend the labyrinth to the best of their abilities. She taught the ways of the hunt and the methods of walking through dreams to the children. She told them that they must love the plants of the forest, and that they must respect the creatures that fall under their arrow. I speculate that this young maiden is the one who took in the Viridescent Venerere, a powerful hunter that lived 500 years ago. The Viridescent Venerere was known for respecting her prey after her kills, coming down and stroking their fur. She was most likely a child that was brought in by this young maiden. Or, another potential theory is that she is the young maiden of this tale, but at the moment it's impossible to truly speculate on something definitive. Continuing though, eventually, the children would lose their origins, and they would become the guardians that patrolled the woods. The maiden was nearly as ancient as the final lord of the forest, and at last, she dreamed the dream of the labyrinth and the hunt. She dreamed that the labyrinth was an endless hunting ground, where the roots of trees and the lines drawn by snaking streams were denser than a tiger's stripes. This is the endless hunting ground that the Viridescent Venerere also dreamt of, the hunting ground where the bloodstains shall never find. However, the maiden of the labyrinth would also fall into erosion with only her dreams left behind. The dreams she left behind circulate through the narratives of the people in a myriad of forms. Her true name is unknown, but according to the artifact set, 
Her name was, in fact, the name of the crown that the Lord of the Forest received from the God of Trees. Therefore, the lore would suggest that her name was Laurel. As the maiden finally disappeared, we continued to the tale of the children she saved in the past, one of which is the Queen of the Hunters. The Scholar of Vine starts with a young girl who understood the language of all beasts and guarded the forest. This young girl is most likely the Verdicent Venerare, given how she speaks in both artifact sets. She holds the forest's integrity to the highest importance, and says that that which comes from the forest must return to it. As long as we follow the laws of nature, then we shall not fear death. We were born of the greenery. As long as there is grass and shade, we shall move unimpeded. The Verdicent Venerare's story continues to a few moments during the Cataclysm, this all took place during the beginning of Conria's fall. We finally get into a deeper story of what truly happened in the Verdicent Hunt's lore. They say that there was a blind boy that followed in the footsteps of his white-armored brother, traversing kingdoms, mountains, and rivers. He was obsessed with swordsmanship, but was gentler than anyone. He adhered to justice more than anything else. This young boy eventually found a relic in the woods, pure white as the moonlight but he was chased by monsters and beasts, and eventually, he was killed in cold blood. It was the Veridicent Venerare that found this young boy by tracking the tainted blood in the leaves. She found him dead under the tree she often napped under, and blinded by revenge and vengeance, she struck her arrow into the heart of the monster that killed him. This was when the Veridicent Venerare broke her oath and let herself be tainted by mortal vengeance. She believes she can no longer reach those plains of endless hunt. She instead swore to make the monsters of the Cataclysm her prey. But now we continue the story of the Cataclysm in the forest 500 years ago. The Lord of Folly was destroyed by his own ambition. The kings of the desert arose as one and fell just as quickly. There used to be temples, palaces, and high walls that were devastated and the ancient kingdoms from the past lost all their treasures. The young boy talks about the fall of their kingdom, how his father ascended a tower in pursuit of a falcon, and how the ancient structure could not bear his great weight, casting him into the boiling quicksand. Once the old king died, the kingdom returned to the searing sand, and the prince became a penniless refuge. And this was when he met the Veridicent Venerare. Every night, he'll pursue her, and promptly be expelled. Unfortunately, we now know the story that happens to the refugee and the huntress. So, it was never confirmed if this young boy is also the same as the previous one, but I'm inclined to believe that they are the same boy. Especially given that the boy's backstory is that he was following the footsteps of his brother, and I'm inclined to believe that perhaps they were both princes at the time, and unfortunately just lost their life. But one last story that this artifact tells is very important, especially to the Archon quest. This one was harder to decipher given the way it was written. The story talks of the circle of life and death, and how three friends are discussing this matter. The soul is a void concept, and memories must one day return to this land. What is there to worry about if something that was already void were to fade away? Rather, remind and support one another such that everyone's image will be remembered forever. Thus shall we defeat the natural circle of life and death, and preserve memory forever. Unfortunately though, the three images of the three friends would soon be lost to the erosion, and they ended up forgetting each other, regardless. According to the records and conjectures left behind by Totore, the dream had to be captured, along with the inhabitants of the forest who could control dreams, to remind that friend once again of one's own form and the memories that were shared. And now we get the context of the Torah's possible plan, to revive this old spirit that lost its memories. Whatever the Torah wants to do with the Irman Soul Tree, reviving the old spirit is crucial, and the way to do that is to capture the things that can control dreams. Essentially, you combine the power of the friends if one's spirit is insufficient, the last part of this artifact piece shifts to a first-person point of view that I assume is the Torah's perspective. If the organ that governs memory has taken too much damage and cannot be healed, 
Then bring another old friend and dwell in dreams of the past together. Play in a small treehouse and explore the limitless depths of the jungle. Yes, that would be nice as well. For in dreams, everyone has a chance to start over. But first, those dream spirits must be captured. Those cell swords once did much for me. I trust they will not disappoint this time either. And when they say cell swords, I am inclined to believe that he's talking about the Aramites, because a cell sword is another way to say mercenary. And with that, Yes, that is the story of the Deep Wood Memories, one of the most fascinating artifact lore pieces I've seen in a good while, and we end up with a beautiful tale of the potential future. But, mm-hmm, there are a lot of holes in this compilation because I'm not quite done with the Arkham Quest, and there's still 3.1 and 3.2 to release more context. But I did want to give my two cents on this artifact set because, mm, spicy lore. Anyway, my name is Austin, thank you for chilling with me.